I'm a 32-year-old single woman living alone in a small suburban neighborhood. Uh, my job is pretty mundane. Hmm, I do data entry from home for a medical billing company. Not exactly an exciting life, but it pays the bills. I spend a lot of time by myself, which is fine by me after how things went with my ex. I've been having kind of a rough go lately, even beyond the usual isolation and loneliness that comes with being on my own. There's just this dread that's been consuming me for the past few months. A persistent, nagging feeling that something isn't quite right, you know? Like I'm being watched or followed. Maybe it's leftover paranoia from my toxic relationship. Or maybe I'm just going crazy from too much solitude. Either way, it's been weighing on me. So that Monday evening when I noticed the weird stain on my ceiling, it immediately set me on edge. A dark, vaguely handprint-shaped blotch right above my desk where I work. Had it been there before? How did I not notice it? My heart started racing as terrible scenarios flashed through my mind. What if someone had accessed my place through the attic while I was out? An intruder creeping silently overhead, watching me from the crawl space. I told myself to stop being so paranoid. It was probably just a leak or something. Still, I grabbed a chair and went for a closer look, half expecting a petrifying phantasm-style scene. The stain was dry and crusted over. Definitely older than I thought. I gave it an experimental poke and it crumbled apart into a fine powder, raining down on me. Dried? Paint? Plaster? I couldn't tell, but it didn't seem sinister. With a sigh of relief I brushed it off, laughing at my overactive imagination. If only I had listened to my instincts. A few hours later I was jolted awake by a loud crash, like someone had knocked a piece of heavy furniture over upstairs. My heart leapt into my throat as I heard unmistakable footsteps creaking along the ceiling directly above my bed. Slow, methodical, heavy footfalls one after the other. I laid there paralyzed, hoping it was just my mind playing tricks again. But then came the sound I'll never forget. The thud of the attic hatch being lifted open. Someone, something, was up there. At that point, my survival instincts kicked in. Every muscle in my body tensed as I prepared to bolt. I knew I had to get out of there, get somewhere safe and call for help. But the footsteps were slow and deliberate. If I ran for the front door, would I make it before they reached the staircase? What if they came down the hall first and cut me off? My back window. That was my only escape route. Inch by inch, I slid out from under the covers, keeping as low to the floor as possible. One torturously slow shuffle at a time, I made my way across the pitch black room towards the window. The footsteps continued in that same steady cadence overhead. Getting closer now. To the stairs? I tried not to think about it, focusing only on making it to the end without a sound. Finally, cloaked in darkness, I reached the window and quickly unlocked it. A cool spring breeze wafted in, smelling of freshly bloomed lilacs. An odd moment of serenity amid the sheer terror. I could see the McDonald's across the street, a beacon in the night with its bright yellow arches. Fast food and normalcy, mere steps away from whatever evil lurked above. I was just about to lift the window when thud, a heavy sound from the hall outside my door, followed immediately by a chilling creak, like someone testing the bedroom doorknob. My heart stopped. They were already on their way in. There was no more time to waste. Without a second thought, I flung the window open and tumbled out into the wet grass, skinning my knees on the damp soil. I took off towards the street like a bat out of hell, half blinded by darkness but too panic-stricken to care. A few houses down, I spotted the familiar crimson glow of the Sophie's living room. My neighbors, who I barely knew, but who were about to be my only hope. Gasping for air, I hammered on their door with both fists, the icy steel knocker slamming like a gunshot. A porch light flicked on and Mr. Johnson appeared, a balding man in his fifties squinting with confusion. Before he could utter a word, I wheezed out, There's someone in my house, you have to call the police, and collapsed against the doorframe in tears. Turns out when you're fearing for your life, manners go out the window. He didn't hesitate for a second, thank God. Within minutes, squad cars came screaming down the street from every direction, lights flashing and sirens blaring. When they entered my house with guns drawn, I could only sit and watch in mute horror, wondering what fresh nightmare awaited them inside. Hours later, as a hazy dawn broke over the neighborhood, a stoic detective approached to debrief me. An intruder had indeed been inside, lying in wait. Likely there to rob the place, he explained, until I inadvertently came home and stumbled upon them lurking. 
They found a hunting knife and work gloves left on the roof, suggesting whoever it was had been staking out the house from above for some time. As he droned on about the evidence, all I could think was, what if I hadn't noticed that weird stain on the ceiling? What if I had gone to bed like normal, never realizing someone was already inside? The thought made me shudder. My home was supposed to be my safe space, my sanctuary. Now it felt tainted, violated, like the intruder had already taken something from me I could never get back. When the detective finished his grim monologue, I simply nodded in stunned silence, unable to muster any more energy or emotion. Making my way back inside, I moved through the house in a daze, taking inventory of every nook and cranny as if beholding it all for the first time. Had the floorboards always creaked that way? Was that smudge on the wall already there? I would never feel at ease here again. The bedroom was last. I stood in the doorway, estranged from the space that had been so familiar and welcoming just one night ago. Now it was a waking nightmare, the bed neatly made but somehow obscene, mocking me. I thought of faceless figures looming above in the darkness, studying my home and habits, waiting for the chance to strike. With a shudder, I shut the door and retreated to the couch, pulling a blanket tight around me. In that moment, I knew one thing for certain. There would be no more restful nights here. Not for a very long time. Life hasn't been easy lately. My job at the coffee shop barely covers rent, and I've been feeling pretty isolated since my last relationship ended messily. But I've been getting by, taking things one day at a time. Little did I know my boring routine was about to be shattered in the most terrifying way. It was a Tuesday night like any other. I had gotten home around 11 p.m. after closing up the shop, my feet aching from being on them all day. I kicked off my shoes and flicked on the TV, ready to veg out for a little while before bed. As I was scrolling mindlessly through channels, some noise from outside the apartment door caught my attention. At first I thought maybe my neighbor was coming home late, but then I heard voices, two men's voices, speaking in hushed tones that immediately set me on edge. I crept over to the door and pressed my ear against it, straining to make out what they were saying. The voices were muffled, but I could easily detect the harsh, aggressive tones. A chill ran down my spine as I realized with a sickening certainty that these weren't innocent passers-by. Told you this would be easy. Dumb girl lives alone. Just gotta get in there quick before she gets home. My heart started pounding in my ears. They were talking about breaking in. To my apartment. I could make out the distinct metallic scraping sound of something being jammed against my lock. Panic gripped me as I realized I was trapped inside with these two men trying to force their way in. I spotted my cell phone lying on the coffee table and made a mad dash for it, hands shaking violently as I dialed police. I was whispering frantically into the receiver, giving my address and begging them to send someone right away. All the while I could hear the men outside growing more agitated. Hurry up man, I think I heard something. Let's get in there and grab what we can before- Wham! Something slammed against my door with incredible force, the wood splintering slightly from the impact. I gasped and clapped a hand over my mouth to muffle the sound. In the hallway I could make out the sounds of tools and panicked shuffling. Shit, 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 I think she's home. We gotta get out of here before- The unmistakable wail of sirens pierced the night, seeming to come from all directions. The two men let out a jumble of curses, and I heard their footsteps pounding away down the hall. Mere seconds later, a heavy pounding at my door made me flinch. Police! Open up! With shaking limbs, I unlatched the locks, and two grim-faced officers pushed their way inside, guns drawn. I immediately burst into terrified sobs, pointing a trembling finger at the damaged door. They quickly assessed the situation, one officer radioing for backup as the other tried to get me to calm down and explain what happened. Hey, hey, it's okay, you're safe now, the younger patrol officer was saying in a soothing tone as he holstered his weapon. This lady called about a break-in attempt in progress, two males last seen fleeing on foot, be on the lookout. I struggled to get a grip on myself, my hands still quivering violently. There were two men, out in the hall, trying to get in. I heard them. They had tools or something they were going to break in. The officer pulled out a little notepad, fixing me with a grave look. Can you describe them at all? What they looked like, what they were carrying. I didn't actually see them, I admitted shakily. But I heard one of them say something about grabbing whatever they could before I got home, like, like they were going to rob me. And then I'm pretty sure I heard them mention tools or something metallic that they were using on my lock. He jotted down a few notes, features tense. 
Okay. Okay. Well, that's good you didn't open the door. Who knows what could have happened. My partner is calling for backup. We'll sweep the area, but chances are they're long gone. You'll definitely want to get that door looked at ASAP and keep things locked up tight for a while. The next few hours were a blur of police questioning me, taking photos of the damaged door, and canvassing the area for any sign of the would-be intruders. But they had well and truly vanished, like ghosts into the night. After finishing up their reports and making sure I had friends or family I could stay with, the officers finally left, leaving me alone with my thoughts in the deafening silence of my apartment. I must have stayed up half the night, just sitting on the couch and replaying those harsh whispers in my head, imagining the sinister implications. What would those men have done if they'd gotten inside? Was I targeted specifically, or just an unfortunate random victim? The unknowns haunted me, playing on a loop tormenting my mind. For weeks after, I was in a constant state of hypervigilance, jumping anytime I heard a noise in the hallway or catching myself holding my breath anytime I entered my apartment. Looking back, there were little signs that something wasn't quite right, but I ignored them. We always ignore the signs, don't we? Until it's too late. It started off as a normal workday. I got up, showered, drank my coffee, and headed to my job at the bank. Numbers and figures, that's my life. Boring paperwork to most people, but I find a strange comfort in ledgers and spreadsheets. My boss would probably say I'm too meticulous, taking everything literally down to the last decimal point. But that's who I am. Particular to an obsessive degree, some might say. The day dragged on uneventfully as usual. I stayed late finalizing some reports, not leaving until well after dark around 8 p.m. As I walked to my car in the empty parking lot, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. A rusty old van passed by slowly, then circled back around before driving off. Strange, but I tried to dismiss it. You hear so many scary stories. It's easy to let your imagination run wild over every little thing. On my drive home through the quiet neighborhood streets, I noticed the same unmarked van up ahead of me stopped at the intersection. As I passed, our eyes met briefly in the rearview mirror. The driver was a rough-looking older man wearing a tattered baseball cap low over his eyes. He just stared coldly ahead, expression blank. I could feel his gaze burning into me, and I shuddered involuntarily. Get a grip, I scolded myself. You're being paranoid. When I pulled into my driveway, the van was gone. See, nothing to be afraid of. Just my mind playing tricks. I fixed myself a small dinner, watched a little TV, and did some cleaning before getting ready for bed around midnight. As I went to draw the curtains, I froze. There in the distance behind the large oak tree at the back of my yard, I could just make out the unmistakable rust-stained panel of that van illuminated in the glow of a streetlight. My heart pounded as I peered out, hands shaking. After what felt like an eternity, the van's lights flicked on and it peeled away down the street. Okay, now you're really losing it, I told myself shakily. Probably just a crazy coincidence. I double-checked all the locks and went to bed, tossing and turning most of the night. A few hours later I was jarred awake by a loud metallic crash outside. I shot upright, listening hard. When I didn't hear anything else, I started to relax. Then I noticed. The window in the kitchen was open, allowing in a cool draft. Impossible. I always keep it locked. I'm sure someone is here at that point. I called the police and deputies arrived within minutes. They found no signs of forced entry, but did discover boot prints in the muddy ground around the backyard. Maybe someone passing by? The officer said, trying to reassure me. But his eyes told a different story. He could sense my fear too. For the next few days, I stayed inside with the curtains drawn, terrified of what might be lurking out there. My co-workers remarked on how on edge I seemed, asking if I was okay. I tried to brush it off, but the truth was, I was not okay. Something had shifted deep inside me that night, and it felt like I was coming apart at the seams. Nightmares plagued what little restless sleep I could get. Visions of decaying bodies hanging from trees, a derelict van following me no matter where I went, and always that same grizzled man glaring at me with pure hatred from the driver's seat. I'd wake up in a cold sweat just before he grabbed me, the metallic tang of fear flooding my mouth. Thursday night, I finally worked up the nerve to peer outside after dark. There was no strange van, no threatening presence that I could see. I began to wonder if I had just imagined the whole thing due to overwork and stress. 
That's when I noticed a folded piece of paper that had been wedged into the crack of my front door. With shaking hands, I opened it to read the handwritten message. It's me. Just those words, jagged and sinister, like a threat from the depths of my worst nightmare. I collapsed on the floor sobbing, trying to make sense of this hell I had stumbled into. What did he want from me? Who was he? What did he mean he could see me? Was I being paranoid, or was this very real and I was in grave danger? The paranoia only worsened from there. I became convinced my home and workplace had been broken into, that someone or something was watching my every move. The detectives I reported everything to seemed skeptical, like they thought I was just an anxious woman crying wolf. The thoughts wouldn't stop spiraling, tormenting me. Friday morning, I finally reached my breaking point. As I pulled up to the bank, I spotted that same van waiting in the parking lot like it knew I was coming. That was the final straw. I slammed the car in reverse and drove around aimlessly, scared to return home, but more terrified of whatever that thing in the van wanted from me. I ended up parking at a busy gas station, watching my surroundings furtively for any sign of the van. In the end, it never showed, and after several hours, I finally worked up the courage to head back home. No strange vehicles in sight. Inside, everything appeared completely normal too. Maybe my mind had finally snapped. I gathered what few personal belongings were precious to me and left that night, not knowing where I would go but knowing I couldn't stay there anymore. Even now, safely relocated, but I still can't shake the lingering sense of dread. Was I just driven to the brink of madness by loneliness and my own overactive imagination after all? Or is some malevolent force still out there stalking me? I'll never be sure. All I know is the nightmares of that unmarked van and the man driving it will haunt me forever.